This is completely hand drawn using vectors and multiple layers. <clears throat> so everything can be completely repositioned, rescaled as necessary. The, the landscape is entirely imaginary and just built up using perspective and just my general love of landscape and seascapes. Added uh, over layers are details such as animals in camouflage, clouds, obviously hopefully realistic birds in flight, the great the golden plovers in flight, um, features such as waves, seahorses in the waves, foreground, um, ripples in the sand, the sea crashing, lovely piece of sea holly in the left where there's a golden plover sitting on eggs, camouflaged, there's pebbles, the perspective in the sand and the ripples and the waves and the sky. The, the drawing is then transferred to the wooden block, the wood block which is about 60 centimeters by 45. Um, and then the engraving process begins. The engraving is putting in the black lines. The, the jigsaw pieces themselves would be too small if I made all the pieces the, the size of the black lines and I wanted the black lines to add detail. So there's two levels of work going on here. There's the, the detail line in the engraving black lines um, and then there's the actual jigsaw pieces which are obviously cut all the way through this um, thick block of oak which is about one and a half inches thick, 44 millimeters. The engraving process is very dusty and very fine dust and so I have to use a face mask and I suck, use a quiet hoover to suck all the the dust away to keep as much of it out of my lungs as possible. It takes quite a while I'm using a very high speed 400,000 RPM um, engraving device, which is air powered. Now I'm starting to cut. Now with the, the, the piece as it, um, in, in its hole, it's a very, it's quite heavy. It's uh, about nine kilograms. And so trying to cut very, very precisely on something that heavy on a platform that is much smaller than it is it's quite strenuous it helps to well first of all to cut it in half and then to cut it in quarters and then each quarter is relatively easy to handle but the the total amount of line that needs to be cut i calculated it to be something in the region of 80 meters when you add all the cuts together. Um, so here I've cut out the bird and I've cut out the egg where the there's going to be, I've cut out the hole for the egg in readiness for the replica egg to be implanted. I do go away and do that offline, A, because I, that I need a special tool for that and B, I don't want to disclose how I do that because that's part of the mystery I'm trying to create with this whole business of camouflage and jigsaw puzzles and eggs, they're all very fascinating for me. So there the egg has now been implanted into the belly of the golden plover, roughly where I think it would be in, in its um, anatomy in reality. So it would be flying for a few hours at least when the, the egg is fully formed with the egg in its abdomen, um, fallopian tubes, part of the oviduct, um, and it, roughly in that position I believe. So now I can carry on cutting the remainder of the jigsaw pieces. 
it's a very lengthy process. In all, I think it takes about 10 days to cut the jigsaw. Because as I say, the, it's about 80 meters um, total distance and that's being cut at a very, very slow rate. Remember, this is very thick oak. And I think I'm cutting in the region of about uh, a millimeter every 10 to 30 seconds, depending on the, the complexity of the, the turns in the, it, that I'm dealing with. I mean, if I'm just cutting in a straight line, I may get something like... Um, five cent five centimeters a minute that would be going really quickly but if i'm doing really intricate stuff i may be may come down to something like five millimeters for 30 to, seconds to a minute you'll notice my hand keeps going to the rear of this um red uh, machine with, with the aluminium top that is the main cutting machine and that's because I repeatedly have to change the blade because they snap. Although they're made of um, very high strength um, carbon steel, they're very, they necessarily have to be very thin because I don't want to remove too much material. And I'm, I have to weigh up the thickness of the blade, which obviously the thicker the blade is, the stronger it will be, but I have to weigh that up against the width of the cut. So the stronger the blade, the fatter the cut and the more material I will remove, and hence the, the wider the gap will be between pieces. So I try to use as thin a blade as possible so that I get the as small a gap between pieces as possible, um, but without having to, but I don't, I'm trying not to change the blade every five seconds, but sometimes I literally am changing the blade every 20 seconds or something. Um, and a lot of it's to do with my posture and how relaxed I am and how much force I'm putting on the wood. The less pressure I put on it on the cutting blade, um, the less blades I will break. But it's a very delicate... Um, balancing act occasionally so because the the design is printed on paper and then stuck onto the wood i have to after i've cut the pieces remove the the paper that's stuck on the wood and that can be quite fiddly so i tend to do that in stages in the bottom right hand corner you can see a hose and unfortunately, my, the cutting head is off this picture. Um, the, the cutting head generates a lot of dust as well. And I am wearing a face mask while I'm doing this. And there is a hose that I have positioned using a custom made block um, to position the hose as close to the cutting blade as I can. So it sucks as much of the dust away as possible. And you can see the hose going down into this very quiet hoover I've got because it's very unpleasant. I have a more powerful industrial hoover in the top right hand corner as it happens, but it's so noisy. It's just very unpleasant using it. I got a very nice quiet hoover, which does a very, very good job indeed. Um, it's quite expensive and it, it, it's, it's superb. It's I can hear myself think, I can hear music in the background if I'm playing it. So these cut, this cutting is taking place over several days. You'll see the day counter going up. I tend to work about two hours at a time and I set myself goals. I'll tend to work a couple of hours at a time and then just take a break get a coffee, do something, have a meal, maybe maybe do four sessions in a day. You'll see over the course of the video that the light changes, the angle of the sun changes. It's just because this is such a slow process. I may shoot a quarter of one of those blocks 
that may take something like three or four days to cut, depending on how much detail is in the block. I like to vary the density of the cuts in the design because that just mimics reality. Some, 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 some things like the sky are, are relatively uncomplicated, but some things like um, a rocky shoreline or some foliage could be very um, dense in terms of the number of angles and lines. And so you get a nice contrast in the density of lines on a piece like this. And so where there are high density pieces, like the one in the middle now, that in itself could take a day and a half to two days to cut all the lines in that there's, because there's such, you know, there's so many um, changes of direction and high density of cuts. So here I'm removing the, the paper and the film from some pieces I've cut and I go on to then do some more cutting. The, cat, the, the image seems to shake from time to time. And that's because the machine that's doing the cutting is obviously a very powerful machine because it's cutting through very thick wood, very hard oak, very dense wood. And it's causing the whole table, although that's a very heavy, sturdy table I've made, it's causing the whole table to vibrate very minutely and unfortunately the camera is attached via a long oak pole uh, above this table bolted to the side so when the when i am cutting there are very slight vibrations going up the pole to where the camera is mounted at a very um, accurate angle to get it to get everything square but uh, apologies for that So this is a particularly dense piece where there's lots of small intricate pieces and it takes a very long time to get everything. Watch the angle of the sun working into the night here. It's just one of these jobs that I don't enjoy cutting at all. I just want to get it done as quickly as possible. So I will do quite long hours on it. I just want to get it done. The, the, the pleasure on this is very much the finished article for me. It's not the doing. I don't get any pleasure from doing. It. In fact, I dread the work involved in making these pieces. The, the, the day count is up to 53. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the idea of recording everything until I started to cut it. And so there was there's, there's no um, progress on the drawings themselves other than what the snapshots I took of the the design um, I take backups every day so I kind of retrospectively added the, the the drawing phase to the front of this video as a kind of afterthought I never it wasn't in my mind that I would record the, the drawing or any any of this so when I decided I was going to cut it um, so when I decided I was going to film the cutting of it and the actual physical making of it I thought just for completeness it would be good to retrospectively add the the daily snapshots of the drawing but it's the drawing that taken the bulk of this I think the drawing took me about 36 days. Now that's not necessarily full days, but I had more than 36 snapshots where each snapshot had a date at a different date. Um, so I definitely worked on it for 36 days and most of those would have been solid days. Um, 
but that's what takes the time. It's the working out of repositioning the having ideas and trying to incorporate things like an owl into a tree or a couple of mice into a tree, adding sea holly and putting that in front of um, a sitting plover and putting in the landscape and trying to make it work and trying to make it realistic, adding in perspective. So here I'm just removing the remainder of the paper. Oh, and tidying up the, the the edges of the pieces because the 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 raw cut is quite rough and it needs to be smoothened out. The the different degrees of smoothing out. This is the the really um, the the first stage of smoothing out. The, all the edges at this point have right angled edges, so the the the, the saw that cuts them is cutting it perpendicular to the wood but that edge is because it's at right angles it's too sharp for my liking as a finished thing so I do round them do round all the edges off and we'll come on to that in a second here I have to make I have to assemble the whole um, jigsaw just so I can um, do things like sand it and oil it and so I started out with a uh, piece of board and started making assembling the piece then I realized it wasn't wide enough so I had to reorientate it to a landscape position I should have known that in advance but there you go so now I'm just now to just reset to assemble the piece this I think took me six to eight hours and so even though I I've designed this for days and days so most of it is in my memory Every individual piece has got is so some of them are so small, even for me, the designer, it takes me this long to put the whole thing together. And so, yes, I think this is about a day, best part of a day just to put everything together so that I can then take it to the next stage. But the next stage is to put to mount this jigsaw in a cradle that I've made so I can turn it upside down and then um, sand the back of it because the, the because of the direction of the blades the the, the coarser the coarser side of the cut is the underside the top side is relatively smooth here I'm just um, doing some final cleaning and some detail work oh and I am I'm painting in the white and the black of the of the golden plover golden plovers this whole piece is about golden plovers so I want to capture their beautiful summer plumage which is this dandy like contrast between the black bellies, the the white margins to their black bellies, and then their golden, in inverted commas, backs and all the spots on them. So I'm staining the wood here. I don't paint. I am just staining the wood. And this takes two or three coats to get the, because they really are bold whites and blacks. So it takes to get that effect on wood with stains requires two to three coats so now I can stay um, I can oil oil the whole piece which gives it brings out the the grain of the wood and gives it longevity and protection so I'm giving it two coats so now I put it in a frame and I've turned it over so I can take oh I've taken that to another machine where I've sanded the back which is the most coarse part of it and made it as flat and as clean as possible on the back. Now I am laying it all out because I've only oiled the the front of it. I now need to oil all the, the remainder of it, which is the complicated the the back of it and all the the sides, which can be quite um, convoluted. So I'm using now um, an a spray gun a fine spray gun and 
turning each piece a full 360 degrees of, um, horizontally and making sure I get into all the crevices and stuff um, and you know recesses to get the oil onto every um, exposed surface of the wood and I do this for each piece on on the small pieces it's quite it takes quite a long time this is to just protect the wood to seal the wood give it longevity and to bring out the color so this is um, Danish oil I'm using for this it's my favorite finish for wood the cotton wool you see on the egg that's embedded into the main golden plover um, bird is just to protect the egg from getting Danish oil on so now I have to turn all the pieces over back so they're facing the um, so the front side is pointing upwards so I can then reassemble the the piece we even though I put the pieces out in a way that I could more or less remember where the pieces were it still took me this time about three hours to put all the pieces into this tray I've made so I can carry the carry the the work and turn upside down and things like that so that's the oiling done just reassembling the piece so I can get on to the next stage this stage now is about filling in the I want to make the, the the gold so the upper part of all the golden plovers and there's 23 golden plovers in here in this piece I want to make the the surface as smooth as possible so that when I apply the gold gilt it will be a nice smooth finish because to me it's the smoothness of the of, of, a, of a gold finish that makes it look gold gold for me is metallic and it's flat it's not rough and so I'm, I'm trying to recreate I want to highlight the golden aspect of the birds which is a is a complete um, pun for me because they're not gold and that's what this is all about but I, I want to have the the, go, the so-called golden part of the birds to be golden and to look as golden as possible so I have um, smoothened out the grain on them filled in the, gr um, the the grain up where the gold is going to go and now I'm applying gold leaf 24 karat gold leaf so I, I added the size or the gold the, the glue for it first of all waited three hours now I've apply I'm applying the first layer of the gold leaf to the backs of all 23 golden plover in the, in the picture I I'm careful to wrap it I've rounded off the sides of all the pieces uh, but I'm careful to wrap the gold around that so that when you do see the finished piece you're not you you don't see the edges of the, the of the gold so the edges of the gold would look like they're going down inside the jigsaw pieces rather than just um, having an edge to them um, that you can see from the front I think I added the second layer of um, gilt and here I've manually by hand you sitting on my lap I've put in the detail about um, the detail of the the spots and the highlights on the on top of the gold um, to give it the, its full majestic spotty appearance now here is the final the finished product and I am shining a light 
on it from different angles just so you just to try to highlight the fact that they are golden plovers i have that's what this is all about i have made them golden plovers as that um play on this concept that they're not actually golden and they couldn't possibly be golden um but to make them golden they are incredibly beautiful and i really want to make sure that the, the gold stands out even in in a video because that's what makes them special and the other thing i didn't say was the eyes are um, onyx black onyx cabochons that i've glued on and the scale of the eyes is proportional to the scale of the size of the bird so that was a piece a piece i did which um quickly skipped over i think earlier on <laughs> 